Hey guys, today in this tutorial what we're going to make is just a simple checkpoint that your player, it'll be a blueprint um, that you can place anywhere in the world and when your player walks through it what we're going to do is we're going to save the character's transform um, and then when that level reopens we're going to be able to set our character's position back to where the last checkpoint was where they checked off so in case they die or something like that they can go back to their last checkpoint so we'll go into it, this will be a short one We'll right click and we'll say new folder and we'll just call this checkpoint just so we can keep everything in one spot for the tutorial. Um, in this we'll create a new blueprint class and this will be of actor and it's going to be called checkpoint BP. Um, we'll open that up and we'll just keep it super basic for now. We'll just give it like a volume to overlap the player with and etc. So we'll go add component, type in collision. Um, we'll go sphere collision and this can be called overlap just like that um, we might make this sphere radius about 250 so it's quite quite large um, and then what we'll do is we'll say add component and we'll go static mesh and this we're going to call disk um, and this is just going to be a floor to to show the player where the checkpoint is so if you go to static mesh and when you type in cylinder you'll need starter content enabled for this um, unlock the scale, change this to 0 0.1, relock it, and then maybe change the Z to 1. No, that's too big. Change the Z to 0 0.5. Yeah, maybe something like that. And then unlock it again and maybe change the Z to 0 0.1. So we've got 5, 5, and 0 0.1 for the scale, like that. And then when the player overlaps this um, disk thing here, we're going to um, mark save their checkpoint, save their transform as the checkpoint. So let's put that in the world. That's our checkpoint just like that. If we walk over to it and have a look at it, it's a decent sized checkpoint. That's good. Um, okay. So, let's delete all of this in here. Um, click on overlap and then right click in the event graph, add event, collision, begin overlap. And then other actor, we're going to hook that up to third person character so that this will only fire um, on overlap with a third person character. So, compile and save. Um, and now what we need to do is we need to put in some save game logic. So the way that we do that is go back into your content browser and in checkpoint, right click, go new blueprint class. Um, and I believe down here where we've got all classes, type in save game. And we want a new save game class like that. And we're going to call this checkpoint save game like that. Okay, so open that up. And now in here, um, go to new variables and we're going to call this uh, checkpoint I guess is the new variable and it's going to be a variable type transform like that and this is the this blueprint is where the data is going to be saved so we need to update this checkpoint transform here whenever we want to save a transform for the player to be returned to when they start the game again so if we go back into the blue checkpoint um, BP up here um, what we're going to do off of this is we're going to type in um, load game from slot actually no we don't want that just yet but we will use that in a second the first thing that we need is we need to check does save game exist um, and as the slot name let's drag that off and promote that to a variable and we're just going to call this checkpoint save name like that compile and save and then inside of that we actually need to give that a name so let's just call that checkpoint like that okay so we're checking if a save game exists now off of that we drag off a branch so if there's no save game that already exists then we create a save game down here and if there is a save game that exists that's when we're going to load the game from that slot so we put the load node up into this like that grab the checkpoint save game name put that down there like that um, now let's do the create save game. So if we drag off of false and say create save game object like that, and the object that we're going to be creating is what do we call it? Checkpoint save game, just like that. That one that we created earlier. Um, once we've created it, what we want to do is we'll drag off of return value and we'll say promote to variable, and we're going to call this save game reference, just so we can use this later without having to drag this node all the way across the event graph. Um, and what we'll do is up here is we'll do the exact same thing. No, we can't. 
and that is because we need to cast to checkpoint save game up there. See this one here, it already you know, the return value is already of checkpoint save game because that's the one that we created. But here we're just loading a game from the slot. The blueprint doesn't actually know that it's a checkpoint save game. So we need to cast a checkpoint save game like that. And then off of there, we should be able to attach this like that. Beautiful. Okay. So this is creating this is loading the game. This is creating it if we don't already have one. Um, so if we drag off of this and type in um, reroute, you can add a reroute node like this, and now we should just be able to connect these up like that, um, because from here on the code is going to be the same. This is the only part that's di that needs to be different depending on whether the save game existed or not. Okay. Um, so now that we've got that and we've loaded the save game or we've got a reference to the save game, now we actually need to save the transform. So if you grab in save game reference like that, and we say set um, checkpoint, which was this thing that we created in here. Set checkpoint, um, and what are we going to set it to? I guess what we'll do is we'll just get the location of the center of this as the checkpoint. So we'll say get actor transform of self. Um, but actually, what we might do is We'll drag off of this and we'll say make transform just because we want to edit those values just a little bit and we'll split this um, pin here for get actor transform um, just like that and I think what we'll do is we'll hook up the scale and the rotation well I suppose it doesn't really matter let's just leave those as 0 and 1 because that's that's a good um, set of values right there, but then the location is the one that we need to change. So the reason that I wanted to split this is because I want to add a vector here like that and then add that up into transform there and I just want to add um, maybe 200 onto the Z just so when the player spawns in you're not spawning right at the center like that but you're spawning a little bit above and you can fall a little bit just so you don't fall through the floor. Um, and as for rotation and scale we don't really need to worry about those. Okay, so now we've saved we've set the transform now we just need to save the game to the slot so we type in save game to slot like this now the save game object is just the reference that we saved earlier and the slot name is the save game name just like that and now that should be complete um, what we might do is we might just add a little print string off the end of this to make sure that it's firing and we'll just say saved game successfully like that just to debug um, and what we might also do actually is we might just type in append off of that. So we'll say saved game, um, full stop, add a pin, and then I'm going to say transform, and then semicolon, and then C. I'm just going to hook that up to the transform like that, just so um, we can print the coordinates of the last checkpoint to make sure that it's working. Okay, so let's go in here and we'll go play. Alright, we got a message and that's our transform at the top. Beautiful. Um, let's... Um, now let's leave that like that for now. Now what we might do is in our character blueprint um, third person BP, blueprints, third person character open that up, find some empty space um, and type in begin play and now on begin play um, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to copy the code that we used for the checkpoint save game over here so what we're going to do in the third person BP is on begin play um, we're going to check if we have a checkpoint and if we do have a checkpoint then we're going to set our transform to the checkpoint transform so same deal, does save game exist um, if it does, load game from slot, load game from slot like that. So we'll copy all of that and then paste that in here. Now, checkpoint save game. We'll just right click that and we'll just promote that to a variable and hit compile and save. And we just need to check the name that we called that in the last one. So what did we call that here? Just checkpoint. So go over here to default value and just type in checkpoint into there. It's very important that this is the same name as in the other blueprint. 
So does a save game exist? Um, if it doesn't, don't worry about it. Don't do anything. Just start at the default player start. If it does exist, load it and then promote it to a variable so we can save it. And just down here in your um, variables, we could add a category here just dedicated to save game variables like that. So we can drag both of those in there so we can collapse that if we need to later and just keep everything neat. So compile and save. So that's successfully loading the save game. Um, and then what we do off of this is we'll say get um, checkpoint like that. That'll be the saved checkpoint. We're loading the saved checkpoint from our save game. And then what we might do is we'll say set actor transform like that. And the target is going to be the self, our third person character. And we're going to set our transform to the transform that was saved. So now if I start this, um, our save game should already exist and we should spawn in the center of that disk. There we go. Check that out. And now if we were to duplicate this guy holding alt and drag and put this over here, we'll spawn in the center of this. And now if I move over to this one, that should have updated our save game, which it did at the top. You can see in the print string. And now if I get out of that and then press play again, this time we spawn over at the other one. Beautiful. All right, that's the checkpoint system. Um, I might leave that there and we'll brush up and add some more stuff in the next video. I might make this a series and keep elaborating on this system. So that's it. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.